Blessings to you guys on this awesome Monday. Today is the day after Christmas, December 26, 2022. We only have a few days, you guys, to go into 2023. So I hope you guys are ready. I hope you guys are doing everything that you need to do to prepare yourself for 2023 and on. Even tomorrow, just prepare yourself. Whatever you're looking to let go, um, not just, you know, people, you know, we so focus on letting people go, but more so focusing on the things in your home that you may not need. And always remember, before you get rid of the things, trashing them into the trash or taking them to Goodwill or their store, as I do, check with your folks. They may need the items that you are no longer needed. You no longer need it. So, you know, call them up. They may need it. And um, bless them. You are blessed to be a blessing. Welcome to Excel in God's Arms. Once again, I want to share um, a few things that Excel in God's Arm is doing at the moment. Uh, we started December 17, 2022. Um, we, we have a testimonial meeting every um, third week of the month starting next month in January. I believe the next meeting is um, the first meeting for 2022 will be January 21st, I believe, which is every on a Saturday always from 1 to 3 p.m. And what it is that we do, we bring in different guest speakers and they come on and tell us um, one or two of their testimonies. And for us, we like to know, you know, what scripture um, did they hold close, if any, um, to their hearts during that moment um, before their breakthrough, you know, before they received their breakthrough. So it's a testimonial meeting. Um, its foundation is from the book of Psalms, chapter Psalm chapter um, 119, verse 111. So the heritage of the, um, the testimony, you know, but that's what we'll be doing is coming on once a month, starting next month in January to share testimony. We all need to hear one another's testimony. It's a hope line. We hope that it will help someone that is on there or, you know, help us. You know, we're all about encouraging one another. So please feel free to come on and join our Google Meet. It is not on Zoom. It is on our Google Meet. And if you need that information, please leave a comment at the bottom. Or if you have my number, text me, call me. Or you can reach me at my email, which is exhaling in God's arms, exhaling in God's arms at yahoo.com. So you can um, receive the information from there. I want to come on here today to share about the, um, what are the seven pillars of wisdom? What are these seven pillars of wisdom? Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to help me to get this information out here to your people, Lord Jesus. Um, help us not only to hear the message, but to apply the message to ourselves. Help us to walk in wisdom, talk in wisdom, and continue to pray for your wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. So the seven pillars of wisdom, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 1, wisdom as a woman building a house with seven pillars. Wisdom has built her house. She has set, she has set up its seven pillars later on. And Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 tells us what the foundation of wisdom's house is. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom 
and knowledge of. And see what I want to go back to for the lack of understanding, lack of, lack of knowledge. Um, the fear of the Lord is not like he's a big boogeyman or something like that. The fear of the Lord um, pertaining to God is the fear of the Lord is respect. Respect. Just as us, some parents, our children, they they respect us. They're not afraid of us. They, they respect us. I just have to share that. Um, that part because a lot of people are lacking understanding lacking knowledge um so verse proverbs 9 verse 10 tells us what the foundation of wisdom house is the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy one is understanding this verse refers to being a awe being in awe of god rather than being afraid of god as I mentioned earlier, we can build wisdom up from that foundation by developing the seven pillars of wisdom. The Bible describes those pillars in another book, the book of James, which focuses on wisdom. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you that is the book of James chapter 1 verse 5 James chapter 3 verse 17 describes the seven pillars of wisdom that God gives generously to those who ask of him but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure then peace loving, considerate, submissive, then peace loving. I'm sorry, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all, pure, then peace loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. The good fruit, you can go to Galatians chapter Five verses 2022 20, and know what the fruit of the spirit is in the bible the number seven often symbolizes fullness and completion so this so these seven pillars may be taken together as full complete picture of what wisdom looks like in action what is the meaning of of the seven pillars. Pure. Purity involves making holiness a top priority in our lives. Peace loving. Loving peace means focusing on getting along with other people in relationships. I know some of us have it hard doing that, but you know, my saying is forgive them. And then I ask, you know, I go by what Jesus always says, forgive them father for what they do not know. I hold that close to my heart and just move on. Considerate. Being considerate means being respectful and gentle with the words and actions we choose. Submissive. Submissiveness means being humble and sensible. Full of mercy and good fruit. Being full of mercy and good fruit means being kind and taking action in compassion so that good happens in the world because of us. Impartial impartiality involves being unwavering in our commitment to faithfulness. It means choosing to follow where God leads us. Order our footsteps, Lord. Direct our footsteps. No matter what else competes for our attention. Stay focused. It also includes being fair and just. Number seven, sincere. Sincerity means caring about the truth, living with integrity, and being genuine. Now, how do we apply these seven pillars to our lives? Pure. 
we can pursue purity by asking the Holy Spirit to renew our minds, to renew our minds day by day so we can learn to think in pure ways that lead us closer to God. Amen. Then we can intentionally choose purity as our thoughts lead to our words and actions. Jesus tells us in Matthew, in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, and verse 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Purity involves aligning our hearts with what matters most to God. When we ask, the Holy Spirit will help us focus on what pleases God and helps us holy choices and avoid what displeases God and harms us sinful choices. We can rely on the Spirit's help for the self-control, which you can find in also again, Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. We need to live pure lives. Simple as that. The Spirit will lead us away from the temptation to sin and toward what is holy.